everyone. Cheryl Arkell, Better Reading. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to What Are You Reading? Um, and I really want to know what you're reading. Uh, there's so many, well, there's so many fantastic books out, but there's a particularly good book out today, um, which is, and it's our book of the week, but I'm not going to tell you what it is until more people have tuned in. Hi, everyone. Cheryl Arkell, what are you reading? Um, so this is a segment where we tell you what we're reading and you tell us what you're reading. Uh, Jane Tara is there and says, hi, everyone. Um, I think Jane Tara might even be a special guest today. So um, Sandra's just dropped in as well. Hi, Sandra. So today we're talking about um, all sorts of books and we're talking about what we're reading. I'm still in San Francisco. It's 7 p.m. here um, in San Francisco um, and I'm just having the loveliest time. The weather's been great. I uh, Here in Sydney it's very, very hot, um, whereas here the weather is perfect for me. Now, listen, the first book that we got, we've been reading and that we're going to put up on screen is very, very special. Drum roll. Um, you might have seen um, that we've been talking about it already, but it's our very, very own Jane Tara. Jane, for those that don't know yet, Jane has written a book and it's called Tilda is Visible. And it's about this woman um, and she's, uh, I think, in her 50s and she feels invisible and then she starts to become invisible. And it's the challenges that, you know, um, it's about the challenges, I guess, that women face with ageing. Um, it's a beautiful book. It's got lots of humour. It tells a great story. And we put it out for preview and everyone is loving it. And, of course, yeah, we love it because we love Jane, as well as it being a great book. So Tilda is Visible. It's our book of the week this week. And it's by our very own Jane Tara. Now, Jane is on in comments. So if you want to ask Jane a question, please do. But also, Jane's going to be doing doing an event with Rachel Johns. Um, and I think that's coming up. When's that event with Rachel Johns? Anyway, that's coming up. Let me just find it. So Jane is going to be in conversation um, with... Is it with Rachel Johns? Anyway, there is a book event with Jane and that's on um, Facebook Wednesday the 6th of March at 8pm. Okay, did I get that wrong, Jane? Is it, um, are you not on with Rachel? Anyway, somebody's going to be talking to Jane. It might be me. It might be Rachel. I'm not sure. Oh, yes, it is with Rachel. So it's Wednesday the 6th and it's at 8pm. But Jane's on now. And if you want to ask her some questions, I'm sure she'd be very, very happy to answer. So this is what we're reading. And this is what everybody should be reading at this very time. Okay, Judy says hi. Hi, Judy. Christine says hi to me and the team. Um, so the team uh, not at the office today. Everybody's working from home because apparently it's like 40 degrees in Sydney. And the air conditioner's not working. So the office was like an oven. So people had to go home. Whereas I'm in San Francisco, as you know, it's 7 p.m. The weather is gorgeous. It's really just, just the way I like it. Sunny days, cold nights, perfect. Okay, hi, Sue. Um, hi, Alita. Uh, Alita says, I've just finished uh, Resurrection Walk by Michael Connolly, another great read. What a great writer. I was only talking to him um, talking about Michael to somebody here the other day and talking about what a great writer and how he gets the mood of L.A. just so perfectly, doesn't he? You know, it's got a really strong sense of place. Um, Carolyn, hello, Carolyn. Um, I am well, thank you, and I'm enjoying life. I'm really enjoying being here. Um, and this week uh, Carolyn read Trader's Gate by Jeffrey Archer and Mr. Einstein's Mr. Einstein's Secretary by Matthew Riley. So you're doing the boys this week, Carolyn. That's good to know. Jeffrey and Matthew. Uh, Malvina, hello. Um, and Malvina says hi to all of us. Uh, and Malvina's about to start The Women um, by Kristen Hanna. Um, and she says congrats to Jane. Yeah, well, everybody's got to read um, uh, Tilda. 
Um, and I'm sure there it is, Tilda is visible, and I'm sure you will. And I'm sure you will all let Jane know what you thought of it. Okay, Jill is reading The Tilt by Chris Hammer and loving it, and why wouldn't you be? Christine has just received her copy of Tilda is Visible and can't wait because that was part of the preview. Um, Claire, uh, hi, Claire. She, uh, welcome back. Yes, I'm I'm back to doing um, uh, Thursday afternoon. I was going to say Wednesday night because it's Wednesday 7 p.m. in um, San Francisco, but it's Tuesday 2 p.m. your time. I won't be doing it next week, um, but I will be back on hopefully two weeks later because I'm going to Mexico next week um, and I'm sure um, I'm just going to be moving around a little bit so I won't be able to do it. Can't wait for Mexico. Anyway, um, uh, Claire says um, she's reading The Farmer's Wife um, by Helen Rebanks. Melissa, um, hi, Melissa. Melissa is reading Chai Time at Cinnamon Gardens by Shankira Chandra. We love her. Uh, Sandra, looking forward to reading Jane's book. Absolutely. Julietta, hi, Julietta. She's at one of our resident authors. She's just finished Good Material by Dolly Alterton. Highly recommend it. But I've read Tilda and everyone needs to get a copy. It's fabulous. Well, there you go. There we go. So if Juliet Henderson says you've got to read it, then you've got to read it. Um, Judy is about to start The Light Pirate by Lily Brooks Dalton. Uh, Christine says congratulations to Jane. Um, Jane is on there and she'll be she'll be interacting with you. Kaz says uh, just started A Brilliant Life by Rachel Unreich. I think that that's how you spell it, Unreich. Um, Denise, uh, hi, Denise. Denise is reading Before You Knew My Name by Jacqueline Bulbits, Bob Blitz. Uh, love Tilda is visible. Thanks to Better Reading Preview. Thank you, Denise, and thanks for letting us know. Sandra is reading A Family of Strangers by Fiona Lowe, who is another great friend of Better Readings. Wendy, um, hi, Wendy. She says hi to all of us. Finishing the other Bridget physical book. That's the Rachel Johns book. And listening to the last Love Letters by Emma Gray. Okay, what else have we got? Let me just get my list up. Um, so the next book that we're reading this week, other than Tilda is Visible, um, is uh, Joe Moody is Out of Time by Karen Main. Uh, and most of you, well, you will, a lot of you will remember Lenny um, Marks Gets Away with Murder. Well, this is by the same author. Um, on her twin daughter's 21st birthday, Joy Moody, proprietor of Bond Beach's premier laundromat, is found dead. Um, and the strangest things are happening behind the bright pink facade of Joyful Sons. <laughs> there you go, a crime thriller in a laundromat. Anyway, um, that's by Karen Main, and that's what we're reading this week. Tell us what you're reading. Um, for those that have just joined, Cheryl Eichel, Better Reading, what are you reading? I'm in San Francisco, um, and uh, that's why I'm not in the office, uh, and I'd really love to know what you're reading. Okay. What else have we got here? Janine um, says hi to all of us and he, she's just read A Shadow at the Door by Joe Dixon. Great read. Anna says I've got a pile of books to read but waiting on my preview copies to arrive. Great. Joy Bell. Hi, Joy Bell. I think it's been a while since we've seen you on here. Um, it's good to see you but miss your banter with Jane. Yes, that's right. Well, we will get back to it. I'll be home in April um, and then we'll be chatting, Jane and I. And don't forget Joy Bell, got to read Jane's book, Tilda is Visible. Lisa, um, just finished um, Maine by Jessica George, great read. Uh, Linda, Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson is what she's reading. Wendy says congratulations to Jane. Um, uh, Julie says hello, I've just joined this group. I am halfway through Tea Ladies by Amanda Hampson. Well, you're welcome, Julie, and we love this group. It's such a great place to talk about what you're reading, um, to talk about how many books you've read, where, how you like reading, whether you like reading hard copy, audio, ebook, whatever it is. Um, and we're very, very happy to have you on board. Um, Meryl says, I'm reading White Noise by Mercedes Mercia. Natalie is reading Kill Shot by Vince Flynn. We love Vince Flynn. Uh, what else are we reading? Oh, Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. Now we remember, uh, what's Kylie's previous book? I've forgotten the name. Somebody help me out. Oh, here it is. Uh, such a fun age. Well, this is Kylie's new book, Come and Get It by Kylie Reid. It's sharp, it's min 
intimate, it's provocative. So you will remember her first book was a debut fiction and to great acclaim. Well, this is the second book. Um, and it takes you in uh, into a lens of these money-obsessed society and the story is just full of tension, full of desire, full of consumption, and definitely full of bad behaviour. Okay, all right, what else have we got? Um, uh, Teresa is reading uh, The Other Wife by Michael Robotham, um, and she loves the book. We love Michael. I think he's got a new one coming out this year too. Um, Hanadi, hi, Hanadi. Um, she's reading uh, Congrats to Jane, she says. Have been pretty slumpy in my reading lately, but I've just picked up A Woman is No Man by Et Farum. Well, there you go. That's that's a good book to get into. Colleen says Reading How to Be Australian by Ashley Collagen Blunt. Collagen Blunt. Um, Lynn is reading Fearless by Yelena Dokic. Um, and what a brave person she is. Do you know, um, age, this is a few going back a few years now where um, a journalist, a sports journalist, wrote uh, Yelena's biography, right? Um, I can't remember when it was. Some of you might be able to remember this. And that journalist came into the office and we recorded a podcast. It was very, very early on because we didn't have the podcast room. But I remember thinking, like, all the violence that, that girl endured, right, terrible violence, and I said to the journalist, people must have known, people around her must have known that this young woman was beaten, beaten up almost every single night. And that, that's true. She was beaten up almost every single night. And she would show up the next day to tennis and she had the signs of being beaten up and not one person did anything about it, not one. Nobody reported it, no one in that whole tennis organisation, everybody must have known, the journalists must have known, and no one did anything about it. Do you know, I remember going home that night and just really being very upset for her, and I hadn't met her or anything, I was speaking to the journalists, but being upset for her that she grew up in such a public environment yet nobody helped her. It's terrible, terrible. Humanity sometimes, it lets you down, doesn't it? But that's what happens, you know. She's making a whole lot of money for a whole lot of people and they just let, let that happen. Anyway, here she is, fearless. She's telling her own story. I really, really admire her. Um, Yvonne is reading The Other Bridget by Rachel Johns. Uh, Christine, I haven't had much of a chance to do much reading this week. We have been very busy with helping out with the fires here in Western Victoria. Well, that's terrible, isn't it? My heart goes out to you. It's terrible what's happening right around the country. I feel for you and I hope that you stay safe and the people around you as well. Um, Julie's very happy to be here and we're very happy to have you. As I said, every Thursday, 2 p.m., such a lovely way to spend half an hour. Uh, Margie says hi and she's reading The Chocolate Factory by Mary Lou Stevens, another great friend of Better Reading, and it's wonderful. Um, of course it is. She's a wonderful writer. Um, uh, Christy, uh, Tracy says um, to Christine, hope you're staying safe and we all we all hope that for you and I hope they're contained very, very quickly. Um, Cheryl is reading, um, hello, Cheryl, what a lovely name, uh, is reading Ga <laughs> Gathering Dark by Candace Fox, who we love. Um, Hanadi said she loves such a fun age. Well, there you go. So this is her second book, um, Come and Get It by Kylie Reid. Okay, what else are we reading? We've got The Murder In by James Patterson and... and um, and Candace Fox, um, and I told you the story of how they met last week, um, and here it is, our very own Australian author, Candace Fox, uh, writing with a very famous James Patterson. And apparently they they really are genuinely writing together. You know, she writes her bit, he writes his bit, they exchange a few notes and get a great story. I mean, it's amazing how I find that the, the craft of that process must be um, quite difficult because you don't want to change voice every time somebody else is reading, if you know what I mean. So it's they're very talented writers and that's how they get it right. Uh, Jessica says congratulations to Jane. 
Um, and that's because Jane's book's out and it's called Tilda is Visible. Um, and she says, hi to me, I'm reading Lola in the Mirror by Trent Dalton and loving it. We love Trent. Um, and uh, Christine is a volunteer with the uh, CFA. Wow, Christine, that's a lot of devotion. Again, be careful, stay safe. Okay, apologies to Emma Gray. Her book is called The Last Love love note got me in very early okay all right we know cindy hi Sher hi cindy and she says hi to me just finished love match by claire fletcher and also a couple of audio book of rachel johns the road of hope and jilted and i've just picked up a Le leslie pierce book called the house across the street and i almost uh and i also read a chapter or two of 12 steps to a long and fulfilling death by sarah smith well <laughs> what else are you doing sydney <laughs> Cindy, is that it? Is um, I I'm, I really have a lot of admiration for people that can read multiple books, multiple books at any given time. I really am definitely a, a one book person. Okay, what else have we got? Um, Taz says, good morning, Cheryl, and congratulations to Jane. Currently reading Ink Black Heart by Robert Galbraith and listening to The Retreat by Sarah Peace. There we go. Um, Diane is reading The Other Bridget. Um, yeah, Kerry says, poor Yelena, PS PDSD forever. I know, unbelievable. Unbelievable and it probably could have been stopped, you know. Um, anyway, anyway. Um, I was going to show you what I'm reading, but I've left it in the other room, and that won't be good um, good television if I get up and 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 try and get it. So I'll keep going. Oh, maybe maybe I'll um, get uh, uh, Dex to put it up for me. Dex, see if you can find this. It's called Things You May Find Hidden in My Ear, and the author is Mosap Abu Toa. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to put that up and, and talk about it as well. It's a book of poetry. I bought it here in San Francisco and I've been reading it. Now, there's a couple of things I need to tell you about. The first thing I need to tell you about is the Melbourne Writers, uh, not the Melbourne Writers Festival, the Manly Writers Festival. Here it is, the Manly Writers Festival. Um, and it's a really big event um, and it's being held from the 14th to the 16th of March. And the theme is celebrating the power of storytelling. And the lineup for the fe festival um, includes local, national, and international authors. Now, we're going to put the link up here in comments and you can find out more. But there's so many people. They've drawn a really good crowd at the Manly um, Festival. Uh, I know Julia Baird's going to be there. Um, lots of authors are going to show up for it. I think um, who else is going to be there? Tom Keneally is going to be there. So they've got a great lineup, um, and that's the Manly Writers Festival, um, and that's the 14th to the 16th of um, of March. Okay, all right. Now, oh, here's things you may find hidden in my ear. So for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you will know that I have been an advocate for what's happening um, in Palestine. Um, and for those of you that know know me, you will know that I am Lebanese Australian. So you know, I feel as, go, as, a, as though for me, I've got skin in the game. I'm speaking to my cousins in Lebanon regularly. They're very worried about what's happening to them, what could happen to them. Um, but they're they're trying to be very hopeful. But you know, what's happening in Palestine is really a humanitarian crisis. Um, anyway, so I've been really drawn to some of the Palestinian poets. They've been, there's been a lot of poetry coming from the Palestinians at this time and in their moment of grief, um, you know, they've taken, um, they've taken th this grief and they're, they're talking to us about it through poems and they're just absolutely beautiful. And one of the people, there's many people doing it, many poets, but one of the ones that I've noticed and I went out and bought his book was Things You May Find Hidden in My Ear and his name is uh, Mosab Abu Toa and he is Palestinian and he's he writes for The New Yorker and his family fled um, from Palestine just very only a couple of months ago, so very recently, um, once the conflict had started 
and they're now in Egypt. Um, but he has relatives, he has a sister, he has a brother-in-law, they have children. His sister-in-law is pregnant. Um, there's no health care, as you know. All the health systems collapsed. Anyway, he writes beautiful poetry um, and he, uh, he shares it with us on Instagram. And so I went out and bought the book and it really is very, very beautiful. So anyway, highly re recommend that one. Um, what have we got? What have we got? Um, uh, Rachel says, hi. Uh, she's been reading The Other Bridget and love the little jog JB in it. Yes. So I recorded a podcast with Rachel Johns the other day um, and she um, she loves John Brown, but she also loves the book John Brown Rose and the Midnight Cat. And a lot of, um, as you know, The Other Bridget has is inspired by other books like, you know, Bridget Jones, whatever. So she wanted the book to be inspired, uh, the dog's name to be inspired by a book too, and that's why she went for do for John Brown. But anyway, there you go. Teresa says, yes, really looking forward to Thursdays at 2 p.m. Well, we're right here at the moment and stay with us. Um, Nolene says hi. Kaz says hi. Um, Emily is uh, reading um, in paper. She's got so I love Emily's message. She's got different formats coming up. So paper book, she's reading uh, Mutag by Christopher Paola, uh, Paolini. Paolini. Um, and I remember when his first book came out, Christopher's, he was writing young adults. Is that young adult or is it an adult? Let me know, Emily. Um, in audio, um, probably going to pick Deadbeat Druid by David Slayton, the conclusion of an urban fantasy trilogy. I've actually got a lot queued at the moment. This is Emily. So I have lots to choose from. Ebook, she's reading Mother Faker, a smutty romance uh, by Brittany Nicole. So there you go, three categories in the comments and what Emily is reading. I would love to know about the Christopher Paolini book. I want to know whether it's adult or whether it's YA. Um, because I think his first book, um, and I can't remember the name, big thick book, uh, was YA, I think, from memory. Anyway, there you go. And he started writing at a really young age. I think he was 18, 19 when he wrote his first book. Uh, Kerry, always great to hear your voice share. Oh, thank you. Uh, so knowledgeable on all things happening right now uh, with what are you reading. That's right. I mean, you know, I try and stay up there, but I probably don't read as much as you guys read. I mean, there are those of you that are reading in, you know, reading hardcover, audio, ebook at the one time and, you know, reading one book and another book and one at the coffee table, one in the kitchen. But anyway, we're all great readers, right? That's why we're here. And we all love to hear stories. Actually, I recorded a podcast um, today with a woman, um, it was fabulous, um, Jen, uh, Glenna, her name is, Glenna Thompson. And the, the book is called Gone. Um, and I recorded it this afternoon. It was really quite sweet because she came on and we were doing it via Zoom. And I said, where are you? You know, and she said, oh, I'm in Melbourne. Uh, where are you? And I said, in San Francisco. And she said, oh, you wish. I said, no, <laughs> no wishing. I am in San Francisco. And she thought I was joking. And I said, no, no, no. So she's obviously new to better reading because all of you know that I come here once a year. So that was quite funny. Um, anyway, so I had a really, oh, that's why I brought her up. That's why I brought Glenn up. Um, and we had this really great conversation. Anyway, at the end of the podcast, I said to her, thank you so much for your time. The book is wonderful. It's uh, like a crime book uh, set um, in a rural setting. Um, and the, her and her husband lived on a farm for a long time. Uh, but she said one of the things she had listened, she's been listening to the podcast, and one of the things she likes about them is that they're conversational and no set questions. And she said, I really, truly believe that you're talking to me and you're interested in me. I said, of course I'm interested in you. I am so interested in talking to people. And, you know, 500 podcasts down and I still, I think I've said this before, I still learn something new every time I talk to someone. It's really incredible because even though sometimes you think that everybody that writes a book, you know, is writing a book and that's the same story, but it's what gets them, what, what is it, how they get to writing the book that's the most interesting bit. And she was, anyway, her name's Glenna Thompson. The book is called Gone. We'll have it out shortly. I don't know if the, I think the book's out already. Actually, let's put that up, Dex, if you can get the cover, that'd be great. 
Okay, all right. Um, Nolene says, congratulations, sweet Jane. Yes, congratulations, sweet Jane. And so does Carolyn. Um, Hanadi says, oh, more sub. I know. Have you been following him on, on Instagram? It's heartbreaking. He is pleading with us to let food in because, you know, one of the tactics that Israel is is using is starvation and, um, you know, children are dying of starvation. Anyway, uh, right, um, Lynn is reading uh, uh, Yelena's, oh, Yelena's other book is called Unbreakable. Yes, that was the one written by the sports journalist um, and I remember at the time just being so moved by it. Oh, there's Glenna Thompson's book um, and it's called Gone. Uh, and I highly recommend it, and the podcast will be out soon. Okay, um, Kerry says, congratulations, Jane. Um, whenever Cheryl asks what I'm reading, um, uh, three years on the third draft, on the loop, reading, re rereading and rereading my own. Oh, I see. So congrats, Jane, on all your hard work. Awesome. It's a long road. Do you know, Kerry, do you listen to the podcast? You should because there's so much inspiration that comes from those authors. It is a long road. It really is. And it's writing and rewriting and rewriting. But every one of the people that I've spoken to, and honestly over 500 people, 500 writers, everybody has said that it's worth it. And everybody always goes back for a second or a third. And this is something you're not going to like. Every person that talks to me says that unlike, like, like say, for instance, you know, I don't know, you practice the piano and you play the piano and you get better and better and better at it every time. Well, from what authors have told me, yes, they get better at it, but each book is as hard as the previous one. Now, even Lee Child told me that, and I think he's up to number 20, and he says still when he sits at his desk, and he's beginning a new book, it's equally as hard as the first book that he wrote. There you go. There you go. But, Kerry, keep going. Absolutely keep going. And look at Jane, you know, she's been at it for a long time and, and here it is. It's out. It's out now. Okay. Um, Alita says, wishing you all the best with your debut book, Jane. Yes. Helen says, good morning from Western Australia. Just started The Rule by David Jackson. That's what Helen's reading. Hanadi says, oh, yeah, Sarah Saylor's flirtation of girls um, is pertinent and beautifully heartbreaking as well. Yes, that's really lovely. Actually, you know what? You know what, Hanadi? You have given me an idea. Maybe we will do a little segment um, when I'm back on What Are You Reading of all the writers out there that are um, – that are writing um, uh, of Arab background. Uh, that might be a really good idea. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that thought, Hanadi. Um, oh, well, Jane says to Kerry, keep going. This was 10 years in the making. You'll get there. There you go. Sandra says she's read 67. Oh, that no, that she has 67 books on her two TBR shelf and borrowed five from the library yesterday. <laughs> Sandra. You've got to get into that that stack. Um, okay, uh, Helen says congratulations to Jane. Sandra said she's read 87 books. That's the same Sandra with the 76, 67 books on her list. Read 87 books in one year. My favourite thing to do is what Sandra says. Melissa, I have been trying to find a copy of Gone. It should be out. I think it was out this week. Um, so keep trying. Uh, Jane, another Jane, Jane Hadley, hello, is reading Paul Lynch's The Prophet. Very good. Um, Melissa says congrats to Jane. Kathy is reading Being Henry. Um, okay, and uh, Sandra, oh, Helen said she only managed 79 books last year, trying for 100 this year. Well, let us know how you go. Okay, we're nearly out of time, but I've got a few more things to cover. Manly Writers Festival, 14th to 16th of March. Lots of great authors. The link is in the comments, so have a look. Jane Tari's event is the 6th of March, Wednesday the 6th of March. Fiona Lowe is on the 13th of March. So these are all our Wednesday 8pm segments live and I know you love them. Uh, Kathy Lett, drum roll, 
Um, hers is coming up too, and that's the 20th of March, Wednesday, the 20th of March. Okay, also we've got two podcasts out this week. Simone Amelia Jordan, she is incredible. Uh, the book is called Tell Her She's Dreaming, and I found her through my advocacy for Palestine. She's advocating as well on Instagram, and we kind of connected, and then I realised she's an author. She was published by Hachette. She's written a memoir. She grew up in Sydney and became a hip-hop journalist, ended up living in New York. Um, her, I think her mother might be Lebanese and her father's Cypriot. Anyway, her parents, she's kind of half Lebanese. But she was so wonderful to chat with, um, incredible story uh, to how she got here. So look her up as well. Okay, I think that's it. Do I have to, have I covered everything? I think I have. Um, uh, half an hour's up. Take care, everyone. I won't see you. I probably won't see you for two Thursdays. Not yet, because I'll be in Mexico next Thursday and the following Thursday, but back the week after that, and then back in Sydney real, real soon after that. But thank you. Love seeing you guys every week. Um, it's so nice to be able to chat with you, to, you know, talk to like-minded people, really. Um, Rob says that um, he feels my pain. All oh, right, okay. About what, reading or feeling Christine's pain about how many books. But anyway, uh, Christine says, my heart breaks for all the Palestinians. They are always in my thoughts and prayers. Oh, thank you, Christine. That means so much to me, you know. I just want this humanitarian crisis to be over. Anyway, that's it from me. Goodbye. Um, stay cool. Uh, I hope those um, bushfires um, end real soon. Um, and I'll see you when I see you.